You're watching The Roach on Florida TV. So how big of a problem is it then here in the United States? Is it is it do you have any numbers? Do you know? Well, State Department again estimates about 200,000 people. Now, that includes the agriculture, the um, um, massage parlor, nail salon, and it includes uh, girls who have been forced into prostitution. Um, let's talk about the, the sex trade, the sex slaves. <sighs> Unbelievable. How, how does that work? How, how are they finding these young girls, getting them away from their families, and then... I don't know, putting them on the street or whatever in the United States. How does this work? Okay. The Internet has made recruiting a lot easier. Typically, they will post ads on sites that they know young people frequent, offering some fabulous opportunity, maybe a lucrative modeling job or a bit part in a movie or participating in a hot new band. Three M's, movies, modeling, music. So a young person sees that and, oh, and, I'm going to be a star or something, right, whatever. Right. Okay. Whatever would turn a 14-year-old on. Gotcha. Okay? And then they go to great lengths to make the interview location look legit. Movie posters everywhere. When the girl shows up, the guy's on a fake phone call trying to pretend like he's He's casting the remake of a major Hollywood hit, you know. Right. Sounds like a bad 80s movie or something. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And then he'll ask her a question, a double-barreled question. She hears the first part, but he's really asking the second part. And this is the question. Do you have time to sit down and chat for a few minutes, or is somebody waiting for you? She's thinking, oh, he's taking me seriously. I've got a shot at this. What he's really asking is, have you come alone? And if she says, well, my dad had to drop something off at his karate studio, but he said he'd be back in 10 minutes, she will not get the job, unquote, um, and she will go safely back home. But if she says, oh, no, that's okay. Nobody's waiting. I've, I've got all the time you need. He will actually sit down and talk with her for five or ten minutes and get her so excited she's, she's just beside herself. And then he'll say, okay, um, let me show you the studio. Well, it's a closet, and he locks her in. Wait, so he just grabs her? at the, he's, he's He doesn't even have to grab her. She's there voluntarily. and But, boom, he ushers her into the closet, and, and he, she's his. And then what happens from there? Well, if he's part of the international slave trade, he will call his broker, who is probably a member of the Russian mafia. And in an hour or so, she is drugged and in a industrial crate of some kind on an airplane, probably on her way to, the, to a brothel or harem in the Persian Gulf. Um, if he's local, he might, again, just call his buddy the pimp, and, um, and suddenly she's obligated to bring in, depending on the market, $300, $500, or $1,000 a day, or be beaten to a pulp. So there are the, so girls, and is it always girls? No. Um, uh, little boys... <laughs> Are, are at huge risk. There's, there's just a bottomless market for pedophiles. And it's, but girls are usually the prostitutes. Um, in St. Petersburg, just a few weeks ago, they found— St. Petersburg, Florida, for Florida, everyone. Yes. Right. They found two teenage boys who had been lured um, to, to come to St. Petersburg because it was going to be such a wonderful life, and they were held as sex slaves. Two teenage boys. So it's not just girls. So wait. So then they grab this person. You said they put them in some sort of container. Yeah. And then they're shipped off like a piece of cargo. Right. And right. they're off to the Middle East. Do yeah. they ever just keep them here in the U.S.? Um, it, the, the market in the Middle East is so lucrative that it's, well, let's put it this way. A good-looking young blonde— 
can easily retail for more than $100,000. And if you have to pay a $10,000 bribe here and another $10,000 bribe there, that's just part of the cost of doing business. Ten girls, that's a million dollars. And as long as somebody is going to pay those prices, somebody will supply the market. So who is shelling that kind of money out when that cargo arrives? Who is this type of person? Is he just a guy that's turned this into a lucrative business and he's got that money? or There are brokers who will supply the princes and the sheikhs and the harems and the brothels of anybody who has the money. One of the biggest main roads in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia is Slave Market Street. <laughs> now, to be fair, King Faisal, in 1962, issued a royal decree outlawing slavery. However, that was mostly for international consumption, because under Islamic law, slavery is legal, and human law can never trump divine law. So um, slavery is still openly practiced in many places on the Persian Gulf. So in some of these countries, then, they are not even hiding it, then? Or? No, no, they're not hiding it. They don't have to. It's legal. So in Saudi Arabia, they might bring somebody over uh, from the United States and not even think twice about it? Yeah. It's just an import. That's all. Wow. That is and, so and freaking bizarre. The, oh, my God. The Scandinavian types are especially, um, especially prized. So they have a certain look that they like. I'm, here's what I'm thinking. They want a look that's different than what they have. Absolutely. So these guys and yeah, these guys are looking for an American look, an all-American look, something oh. different from what they're used to. Blondes and redheads in in particular. Yes. But um chocolate people, vanilla people, caramel people, they're all at risk. Um um yeah, really. No more roach on Florida TV.